Aloha, everyone. Friday was a pretty good session in the overall stock market if you ignore the Dow Jones Industrial Average, NYSE, and SPX. But if you just look at the NASDAQ, you can see that there was a nice big intraday reversal off the lows. Volume was higher than the day before, also confirmed in MarketSmith. So it was a nice accumulation day overall, but nothing too big. But the key thing is that we're holding the 50-day moving average. I really don't see anything in our oscillators. If anything, we're more overbought. But we're kind of mid-range, so I'd expect more chop. You know, I just wouldn't expect this market to just start flying higher. But the Nasdaq remains under a buy mode. Russell 2000, same thing. Yesterday, kind of a fake out following the move back to a buy condition on the 3rd. However, we confirmed it. Nice intraday move off the intraday lows. And the Russell 2000 went out pretty close to the high of the day. So very impressive overall. Um, the oscillators, once again, Nothing too bullish. It's not like we're coming from oversold levels, but there's nothing bearish either. So for now, things look okay, not great in those indexes. The Dow Jones Transportation Average actually led the day on Friday. That is good to see. We are not continuing to break down. If we can get back above the 5,200-day moving average, that would be great. The S&P 500 is now firmly under a neutral condition with confirmation move today. Oscillators kind of don't look good at all. They're all rolling over. However... If we don't sell off that much on the SP500, we'll be getting to some oversold levels, which could produce a good bounce for the SP500. The Dow Jones Industrial Average, same similar situation. Oscillators are rolling over, so not nothing's too great or ugly here, but expect the 200-day moving average to act as the first level of support. Now, despite the action in the overall indexes not being that great, possibly being good in the Russell 2000 NASDAQ, not good in the SP500 Dow Jones Industrial Average, uh, I did notice this hack, beautiful move in hack today. You can see CYBR, nice pocket pivot point signal, buy signal off the 50-day moving average, FEYE. Fire Eye continues to break out to new highs. I have now missed this. Nothing I can do. Neither one of these moves here were buyable to me. And unfortunately, those did turn out to be the buyable move. So FEYE is moving without me. CYBR's flag could be a new long signal. But it seems a little risky to me whenever I look at an arithmetic chart. It's a pretty big move in one day. Would like to see it kind of maybe make a handle, longer handle, move sideways more. Then make another pocket pivot point signal. Then maybe get long CYBR. We'll see. But for now, there's too many choices. But CYBR, very, very, very nice. Before I move on to our new long positions, do have a couple of end-of-day sell signals. IX is failing its second ad signal, which was back here. We got a good fill on it, so we don't even we didn't even lose three percent on the position. In fact, we more likely lost right around one and a half percent on the position. But from our initial long signal, we're still good from back here on the fifteenth. So those low days continue to be the final sell stop levels seventy seven thirteen. So if I close below 77.13, I will be out of it on an end-of-day basis. If it moves below it intraday, I'll be out of it too and then might have to buy back. One stock I don't have to buy back yet, CCO, another chop out. Now remember last time with CCO, I went long, got shaken out here at the end of April, end of March, beginning of April, and immediately came back. So what you might want to do is set buy stops if you have any cash available just above the 1158 level, like at 1159. And if C CEO decides to rip higher again, like it did back in April, you'll be back long. But technically, CCO is failing by closing at 1108. That is below the intraday lows here of 1111, which was my final sell stop level. So CCO has failed. And speaking of fails and buying back stuff, UTHR, canceling quality long signal, perfect speculator scan quality stock now, just moved from the pre to the perf, the pre to the non pre. This was our long signal here. My final cut loss levels were, I don't know where they were. I do know this though, they were probably below 178.68 and with it moving to 178.10, that's where I was fully cut out of UTHR. So what I will do now on UTHR is reset buy stops above the 183.72 level. You could also use the 186.56 level. And if it moves back above there, then I will be long UTHR. What I think I'm going to do is use the 183.98 level, the last, the highest close that we've seen since that long signal. So if it moves to 183.99, I'll be long again. But UTHR, I got to buy back. And now for the new long signals, Man H, Man H, 
Cancelum quality, perfect speculator quality, was in the new 52-week high scan, was in the price volume bop surge scan, and I don't know if it was in any other scan, but I think that it was in one other scan, but I don't remember. Maybe not. Maybe it was just in that pretty perfect speculator scan. But either way, man H, pocket pivot point signal. Technically, this could be a two and a half, two and a half, five, six, seven percent long position if we were under a full on buy signal. But since we're not, I am going to go ahead and move it up to five percent, two and a half percent for can slim, two and a half percent for perfect speculator scan. Um, and we're going to do the 5% because the NASDAQ and Russell 2000 are under buy signals. However, I'm not going to add anything else to those two initial signals, the perfect speculator and canceling. So it'll just be 5% for manage, but beautiful signal. And then CAVM, 2.5% for being canceling quality, 1% for being pre-perfect speculator scan quality. But it already had a previous pocket pivot point signal like Man H is doing today above its 50-day moving average. So nice follow through to the big move on June the 4th by the move on the 5th with heavier volume with BOP increasing to a higher level. So CAVM, 3.5% of my account capital. And then Burl could have been a 2.5% canceling, could have been 2.5% for being perfect speculator for 5%. But because it's earnings, it's just going to be 2%. 1% for being cancelum, 1% for being perfect speculator. If you're really risky, you could go 25 for cancelum, 1% for perfect speculator for 3.5%. But I don't see this thing really gapping below if it does miss earnings on the 9th, below 51.57. But that's the only reason why Burl is 2% is because it has earnings on the 9th. And I... By watching this stock and how it acts around earnings, I don't think we have to worry about anything, but I really doubt that it's going to gap below 50. So to me, it's worth the trade by far. And then RCPT, perfect speculator scan quality stock, went long back here. We have a 29% gain currently in it. However, since I went long, there was a major shakeout of 50% of my position back here. I was never able to re-get long it, and or if I did, I got re-shaken back out of it, which I don't think I did. I, I know for a fact I put one of my sell stops here, got shaken out here, did not add it back, so that's probably where I'm at. I don't know. I, I thought that I got shaken out of it twice, but I, maybe not. I think it was just that one time. So RCPT, I, I can just go easily look right now and know that answer, but RCPT is giving an ad signal, pocket pivot point signal right off the 50-day moving average. I would love to see this thing go parabolic like a few of the other biotechs, and maybe this thing can and will. I can see this thing easily moving to 200, no sales, no earnings, so it's definitely a buyout target due to its drugs and the stuff that it creates. But RCPT, 1% one one position for an ad signal. This was only flagged in my perfect speculator scan. It was not confirmed in any other scan, but this is its per first pocket pivot point signal since back in March, so it's been quite a while.